I got people talking about the Lakers, people like Kendrick Perkins, saying that the Lakers could get to the finals. And then I got others saying the Clippers. What do you say to that, Snoop Dogg? I mean, it's up in the air if you ask me when it comes really? to the West. Because, yeah, because there's so many players that can make, can, can make a difference. Like Kawhi Leonard is a dog. We already yes. know that. Right. And, and players around him tend to play for him. And Russell Westbrook seemed like he's finding his groove with the Clippers. He's hitting threes. He, he's in the right spirit. They're not putting no mm. pressure on him. So it's like, to me, and then you got the Sacramento Kings. They're young, and you got the Golden State Warriors. I'm like, California has got four teams in it right now that I'm looking at. People saying the Suns and, and this and that. But you got to look at the Denver Nuggets. If they got the number one seed, they've been doing something right the whole season. I don't want to look past them. they the ones who people going to really have to deal with. But as far as my Lakers, I just feel like if we can get our chemistry right and start rocking and rolling and play a whole game the right way, then ain't nobody going to beat us. What about Kevin Durant and Devin Booker in Phoenix? Them great shooters, but at the same time, they're going to face the Clippers in the first round. And right. if, if the Clippers hit them, that wouldn't be an upset to me. So you trying to tell me you think the Clippers going to take them or you think they could? What are you saying I exactly? I think they could. I think they could take them. I think mm. the Phoenix is, 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 is seasoned to beat them, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Clippers took it to seven games and pulled it off. Mm. The only thing that I worry about with that is Paul George being injured. Mm. Look at the bracket right key. here. Look at the bracket right here. You got, to me, the best series in the first round is Sacramento against Golden State. I could see 130, 140 games back and forth all series long between those two. Are you excited about that? That's a Bay Area banger right there, baby. And Sacramento yes. ain't been since, what, 2001 or something like that? Mm -hmm. And they got a bunch of young, young players over there that's establishing they, you know, they team and they chemistry and they core, just like the Warriors did years ago. So I like it. I love it. You know, a market that you feel like can't really bring superstars. They got some stars over there that's making it look like. So. Right this moment, in your opinion, who is going to win the Western Conference? <laughs> what happened? Well, here's the deal. Uh -oh. Will Bond, Jalen, uh -oh. Greeny. I want him to tell y'all. Yeah. The list is fluid. Fluid. <laughs> fluid. Okay. So let's make sure we keep that in mind. Yeah. For the moment, I'm going to go with the Golden State Warriors. Ooh. I'm going Ooh. to go with the Splash Brothers, the greatest shooting backcourt in the history of basketball. I'm going to look at Sacramento's defense being suspect. And the fact that that defense is suspect, Andrew Wiggins will be able to get into his groove quicker than he would be able to get into against a more defensive-minded team. I think that ultimately helps them along the way as the playoffs progress, along with their experience with Draymond and Looney. I'm going to go with the Golden State Warriors wow. for the moment. But again, that's <laughs> one vote for Golden State. Michael Wilbon, who's winning the West? Well, I got – you can see where I'm sitting, of course, here in Arizona, in Scottsdale. <laughs> I got some – I got some javelina. I got some coyotes, maybe a mountain lion or two, waiting for Stephen A. to get out here. He loves to just, you know, explore in a golf cart where he's out with nature and the animals. Never. And I think – I think <laughs> – I think we're going to be here. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to argue against the Golden State Warriors. I'm just not going to argue against that. There's no arguing against that. I'm going to argue for the Phoenix Suns, and I think the key here is Aiton. DeAndre Aiton and how the other guys, other guys, the other Hall of Famers, um, you know, uh, Mr. Durant, Mr. Booker, and Mr. Chris Paul, Look, they're going to use their exceptional basketball IQs not just to really get comfortable with each other because they hadn't even played a dozen games together yet, but also how to bring Aiton along. I think we're going to see that happen successfully, slowly. There'll be some bumps in the road, but I'll take the Suns to still represent mm. the Western Conference <clears throat> in the finals. Suns, Warriors, Jalen says. I'm going with the Suns as well. The two most disappointing teams in last year's playoffs – were the Nets getting swept by the Celtics and the Suns losing to the Mavs. So it makes us forget that the Suns were in the finals two years ago and they were in, Game they were the number one seed last year. That's and right. they just added who Stephen A. calls the best player in the game and Kevin Durant. Their half-court offense is going to be unguardable. I'm saying the Phoenix Suns are going to win the West. They open with the Clippers over the weekend. Who's on to round one? They will take on the two seed, the Memphis Grizzlies. 
What would a championship run mean to you? I mean, that's the only reason I play. LeBron, once again, willing his team. It's just been my mindset every year on how can I make a championship run. LeBron takes it in, gets it out, Schroeder. I've been on a lot of championship runs, and I want to continue that. And let's turn around our season and uh, give ourselves an opportunity to uh, compete for the Larry O'Brien Trophy. That's all you can ask for. All right, so the Lakers will now face the Grizzlies in round one of the playoffs. Dylan Brooks seems to be looking forward to this matchup. He said this before the Laker game yesterday, quote, I wouldn't mind playing LeBron in his seven-game series. The legacy's there. First time back in the playoffs. Knock him out right away in the first round. It'll be a good test. Uh, they got good pieces, good players, and that'll be a good first-round matchup for us, end quote. All right, back here with Eminem, Monica McNutt. We got Bontemps, Sim Bontemps back with us. Okay. Woo! You know Dylan Brooks love to talk that talk, yes, Monica. He does. Yes, uh, he does. Talk to me about that. Is he is he already poking the bear? Um no. I have no problem with it. I don't think it's poking the bear. LeBron James is fully aware of who he is and what his goals are, so I'm not buying the poking the bear thing. Dylan is getting himself going. Like, this is, we know this to be a fundamental part of Dylan's game that he likes to chirp. So, how about it? Here's, the thing, here's the thing about it. Dylan Brooks against the Lakers this year in three games. Uh-oh. 11 for 45 from the field, 6 for 20 from three. When we saw last year when they played in the second round against the Golden State Warriors, Dylan Brooks lost in that series by shooting them out of it. And... We talked earlier about the Grizzlies need to be disciplined. Dylan Brooks needs to be disciplined offensively in this series. He cannot be shooting these guys out of games. He can't be trying to win the games by himself, trying to win his one-on-one matchup with LeBron. This series, I can't repeat it enough. It comes down to discipline for the Grizzlies. If the Grizzlies are disciplined at both ends of the court, Memphis absolutely should win this series. But if they're not... That's when the Lakers have a chance. To 100%. Play. You know, the interesting thing is that the Lakers will go into this series as the underdog. So, if that's the case, could you see the Lakers and LeBron pulling off the upset? Well, they can pull off the upset. It's funny you say that. They are the seventh seed. They were in the play-in tournament. They should be the underdog in the series, right? We talk about them like they're going to walk to the championship. But there's a reason they were the seventh seed. Now, you talk about how they can win. Jaron Jackson Jr. has to stay out of foul trouble. Absolutely. This is the other part of the discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Three games against the Lakers this year, Jaron Jackson Jr. had 15 fouls in 96 minutes. He had five fouls in each of the three games. And that's, you know, with no Steven Adams, with no Brandon Clark, Jaron Jackson Jr. has to stay on the court, and he has to stay out of foul trouble. If he does that, and if Dylan Brooks doesn't go crazy on the offensive end, Memphis is going to win this series. It's that simple. Jaron Jackson will probably be Defensive Player of the Year, but uh, Eminem, what does LeBron and Anthony Davis have to do specifically if they're going to win this series? Well, knowing that, you hunt that, right? A team that puts folks on the free throw lines. The Grizzlies are dead even in terms of free throws that they've given up to their opponents. The Lakers have shot 476 more free throws. And so mission one gets to the free throw line. That's something that they do. And I continue to maintain Anthony Davis has to be a monster. The absence of Steven Adams, Literally, other than Jaron Jackson, who is going to guard Anthony Davis if he is playing aggressive and assertive? And so there is an opportunity for Anthony Davis to continue to build upon his legacy. LeBron is going to be LeBron. But I think you got to ease some of the load on him. Now, I will say this. They had 20 turnovers last night versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. If they turn the ball over versus the Grizzlies, a team that leads the league in points in the paint, all those points in the paint aren't in the half-court set. Some of those are off of turnovers getting out in transition, and so they can't turn the ball over because that's adding gasoline to the Grizzlies' fire. To Monica's point, AD drew 21 fou 20 fouls in 71 minutes yeah. against the Grizzlies this year. This series, in a lot of ways, is going to come down to Anthony Davis versus Jaron Jackson mm -hmm. Jr. If AD dominates that matchup, the Lakers can win, but if Jaron Jackson Jr. plays it to a draw or wins it, Memphis is winning easy. And no, listen, I know we've talked a lot about LeBron. We've talked a lot about AD. But the other superstar in this series, John, John Morant. Morant. Yeah. Yep. Can they contain John Morant? I don't see how they can. I mean, between Desmond Bain and John Morant, there is not a perimeter defender on the Lakers who can stop either of those guys. Now, again, this comes back to discipline. Yeah. Are those guys going to be locked in? Are they going to take quality shots? Or to your point, Monica, are they going to push in transition against an older, mm -hmm. bigger, slower Laker mm -hmm. team? Like, this series is set up for Memphis to win. This is a chance for them to come out and make a statement in a lot of ways, like what the Nets were last year with the Celtics, right? You go, Celtics went to that series, a 2 7 series. The Nets were the, the, you know, this team was two superstars coming out of the play in tournament. They had all this chatter about, oh, the Nets are going to make this run deep in the playoffs, right? Celtics come out, sweep them. And, and they dominated yeah. the end of those games. 
This is a young Grizzlies team in a similar spot. They could come out and send a message to the Western Conference. They come out and take care of business in the series. Sue, and I wonder, I agree with you on that, because I think last year's experience with them, having run into the Warriors and, and seeing how their lack of discipline can cause them issues, I hope they've learned from that. I am curious to see how Darvin Ham will deploy Jared Vanderbilt, though, in terms of defense. In terms of he's a long, longer defender, a versatile defender, probably doesn't spend a bulk of a game in particular focused on Ja, but I imagine that they're going to be some strategy to junk it up and make Ja as uncomfortable as possible. But I, on paper, the biggest thing going for the Lakers is the experience of Anthony Davis and LeBron James. And that is nothing to sneeze at. But